Welcome to Podcasting 101, how to start a podcast for beginners 2023 edition. In this video, we're going to... Oh, sorry, excuse me for one second. So you wanted a more radio broadcast style. Okay, I think, I think we can do this. Okay, let's roll it again. Welcome to how to start a podcast for beginners 2023 edition. I'm your host, Gabriel Richards. And if you're looking to learn everything there is to know about starting your own podcast alone or with your friends, you came to the right place. You don't even have your own microphone, you say? Well, that's not a problem, because in this video, we're going to go over all the equipment necessary to get your podcast recorded, edited, and published on the web. From microphones to podcast mixers and headphones to audio software and online podcasting platforms, you give us 15 minutes, we'll give you, well, everything you need to know about podcasting. So now sit back, grab your popcorn, and enjoy the show. Okay, okay, enough of that. Now, you might have noticed I haven't talked about video, and that's because even though a lot of podcasts include video in their format these days, we've decided for the sake of this video to stick to the traditional audio format. To learn everything there is to know about adding video to your podcast, you can click the link to our adding video to your podcast video in the description below. In the meantime, let's get started. Let's start with the microphone. One of the first things you'll want to consider when choosing your microphone is your recording environment. For typical living areas, like a bedroom or a living room, dynamic microphones are recommended as they tend to focus their capture in the front of the microphone and reject sounds coming from the side, keeping your voice in focus. Generally speaking, they're also less sensitive than condenser microphones. Condenser microphones sound amazing, but they pick up a lot more room sound and are therefore a lot less forgiving when used in environments that are not specifically designed for audio recordings. So I would not necessarily recommend them unless you plan to work in a soundproof studio or a very quiet room with some sound treatment. Condenser microphones also require what is called phantom power, an electric current provided by the audio interface through the XLR cable to function properly. Virtually all modern audio interfaces on the market offer an input that provides plus 48 volt phantom power, but this is not necessarily the way to go if you're trying to keep a plug and play approach. Now, before we talk about the microphones themselves, let's discuss another important yet often neglected topic, microphone support. Regardless of what type of microphone you're gonna choose, you're going to need some kind of support. You can go with a simple desk stand, or you can go with something a little more flexible like the Rode PSA1 Plus or this Aura 2 section broadcast arm. Having good microphone support for you and your guests is essential to a successful podcast recording, so make sure not to neglect that. Now the mics themselves. Three years ago, if you had told me that you wanted to keep things as simple as possible to get your podcast going, I would have told you to go with a USB microphone. But things have changed a bit, and these days, microphones now offer both XLR and USB connectors on the same unit. These dual connector microphones offer the simplicity and ease of use of USB mics, while also giving you the option to use the XLR connector if, for instance, you decide later on to switch to an audio interface-based workflow. The USB workflow has lots of pros. The main one, it's a quick and easy plug and play process that requires the least amount of gear. The cons, well, even though the newer USB microphones are better at handling multiple devices, most USB mics only allow for one device to be connected to the computer. So USB microphones are not ideal for multiple speaker podcasts. For that, the XLR microphone audio interface approach is best but I'll get into the specifics of that shortly. So here I have a great example of a USB XLR microphone with the Rode PodMic USB and XLR Dynamic Broadcast Microphone. To use the PodMic or any other USB mic, just connect it to your computer with a USB cable. Make sure the microphone you're using is selected as the input and output device in your computer's audio preferences. Make sure the input and playback or monitoring level is adequate. Open your recording software and you're ready to go. Another great example of a USB XLR microphone is the MV7 by Shure. The cool thing is that most of the newer USB XLR microphones are also compatible with smartphones and tablets. So you can record your podcast straight to your phone, for instance, without the need for a computer. Another thing you're going to want to look for on your USB microphone is a built-in headphone output for latency-free monitoring. 
To keep things simple, the conversion of your voice into a digital signal requires for your computer to think, and that can result in a short delay between the moment your voice is recorded and the moment your computer plays it back in your headphones called latency. And latency, and latency can be can really, really destabilizing, destabilizing and throw and you off balance, balance when you're trying, when you're to, trying keep to keep your speech, your speech flowing. flowing. Recent computers are a lot better at dealing with latency, but to make sure you won't have to deal with it at all, you can and should use the headphone output of your USB mic for latency-free monitoring. Now, let's talk about XLR microphones. Making a video about podcasting without mentioning the Shure SM7B would almost be unforgivable since it's one of the most popular microphones for podcasters around the globe. And for good reasons. It has a really nice rich tone if you get up close and personal with it. And it also does an amazing job at handling plosives, which are audio artifacts generated by air hitting the microphone's capsule frontally, usually when saying words starting with P's and B's. But if you want to use an SM7B or any XLR microphone, you will need to add an audio interface to your setup. In layman's term, the audio interface converts the analog signal of your microphone, aka the sound of your voice, into a digital signal that your computer can record and process. For podcasting, you can either use traditional audio interface like this Audient Evo 4 or this Universal Audio Apollo, or you can use a podcast mixer, which is pretty much an audio interface that's specifically made for podcasting. Audio interfaces and podcast mixers are essential tools if your podcast expands and you want to include more speakers. They come with a set number of XLR inputs, usually ranging from one to four, so you can plug up to four microphones and four sets of headphones. Using an audio interface or a podcast mixer also unlocks the power of multi-track recording. With multi-track recording, each speaker is recorded on a dedicated audio track, resulting in a recording with multiple tracks running in parallel, hence the multi-track part of the name. Recording multi-track allows for greater flexibility in the post-production and editing process, but it's not a prerequisite of a successful podcast, so don't sweat it if you don't see any application for it in your podcast. So now let's look at podcast mixers. In the early days of podcasting, content creators didn't really have tools that were designed with their particular discipline in mind. Thankfully, these days are gone and podcasters now have tools tailored specifically for the jobs. Beyond the realm of traditional audio interfaces, manufacturers have now started to create self-contained podcast mixers that aim to streamline and simplify the podcast creation process by putting all the tools required to create a great podcast in one easy to use box. Just like with traditional audio interfaces, the first thing you'll want to consider is the number of speakers you're planning to have. Podcast mixers usually have one, two or four microphone inputs and feature preloaded presets for popular podcast microphones, such as the Shure SM7B for instance, the PodMic or the ElectroVoice RE20 to help you achieve broadcast quality sound and tone effortlessly and with no prior technical experience. On top of their physical inputs, podcast mixers can easily connect to smartphones or tablets via Bluetooth to patch in guests joining remotely over the phone. As you can see, all of these mixers also feature sliders to let you easily adjust voice levels for each of the speakers, as well as multiple headphone outputs with dedicated volume control for monitoring. The LED touchpads can be used to launch sound effects or audio bumpers like the one you hear on professional radio talk shows or preloaded audio tracks if you want your podcast to include music. All in all, podcast mixers are a great option if you want to keep things simple and centralized and they really do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Another essential item in the podcaster's arsenal are their headphones, crucial for monitoring audio, whether it's voice, sound effects or music. For podcasting, we recommend you use semi-open or closed back headphones as they offer both great sound and cover the whole ear, providing relative isolation from your environment, which is great for both monitoring while you're recording and for editing and mixing later on. Here we have a lineup of options that are all great fits for podcasters, whether they are starting out or are looking to upgrade their current headphones. The AKG K240 with their semi-open design are, for example, a great place to start. They offer great sound while being easy on the wallet, which never hurts. 
I also love Rode's NTH100 closeback headphones, which I'm using right now. They sound great and they have ports on each side of the ear cups, making them super convenient for all recording situations. For those of you who'd like to keep their equipment as light as possible to take their podcast with them wherever, there are of course solutions available. And you probably have one in your pocket or laying around your desk right now. That's right. Your phone or tablet can be used to record and edit your podcast. You can of course use your device's internal microphone, but for better audio, we recommend you use an app-compatible microphone like the Shure MV7 or the Rode PodMic USB. Then through apps like Riverside or even just your phone's basic stock voice recorder, you can record audio and edit your podcast straight from your mobile device. The only downside of that option is that you'll only be able to use one microphone. If you'd like to host a podcast with multiple speakers in the wall, then a portable multi-track pocket recorder like the Zoom PodTrack P4 is a great option for you. This puppy has four XLR inputs with phantom power and four headphones outputs, input gain and output volume knob, and four sound pads. It doesn't get more compact than that. Now that you have recorded your podcast, it is time to edit it. And even though the podcast mixtures we've looked at earlier offer some editing functionalities, it is still easier to edit a podcast on a computer using a digital audio workstation or DAW, which is just a fancy word for audio editing software. Thankfully, there are lots of options and you might even have one already installed on your computer. If you're a Mac user, your computer should have come with a pre-installed version of GarageBand, which is a simplified version of Apple's flagship DAW Logic Pro X. It is nonetheless a very complete option that offers all the tools required to edit and polish your podcast. The same can be said for Audacity for Windows users. A longtime favorite of PC users, Audacity is a free open source audio software perfect for applying post-processing and clean up your voice recordings. Another great option to record, edit and export your podcast is the browser-based all-in-one podcast production studio Riverside.fm. Designed to streamline and simplify the podcast creation experience, Riverside offers a complete solution for podcasters from which you can record your podcast audio and video feeds, solo or with multiple speakers, in person or remotely. Riverside records each participant's feed on their respective computer while at the same time uploading the high-resolution files to the cloud for immediate browser or computer-based editing and expert at the end of the session. Riverside is subscription-based and offers different subscription tiers based on your podcast needs. And honestly, I highly recommend it because of how convenient it is. With no previous knowledge and experience with audio editing, you can get going and get your podcast ready for release easily without dealing with the steep learning curve that comes with using more advanced software. Now that your podcast is recorded and edited, it is time to get it out into the world. To do that, you're going to need to use a podcast hosting platform. Hosting platforms are a great way to publish your podcast on all the main podcast directories such as Spotify, Stitcher, Apple and Google Podcasts, and more. They will also ensure that your episodes are pushed to listeners with interest matching your podcast and help you get started with monetization, once your podcast starts gaining momentum and finding its audience. Most podcast hosting platforms offer tier-based subscription plans adapted to different needs, but most of them have a free plan with all the features needed to start out. Examples of good podcast hosting platforms that you should check out when you're ready to start using one are Buzzsprout and Podbean, but there are many other options out there. So there you have it. By now, you should know what to do to get the first episode of your upcoming podcast recorded and released into the world. That last bit of magic is you. One last piece of advice is to be consistent and more importantly, create content you love and have fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us in the comment below. In the meantime, this was Gabe with BNH and happy podcasting.